on here by the fear that this might be the last Grand National we shall ever see. And uh, that's Kanharis, the great noise with the bandages. And uh, walking around here has been that mountainous horse, uh, Richelieu. The, one of the, the Irish uh, challengers, the Mount of Norton Brooks, trained by Toss Taff. And this horse beat Les Cargo at Listol in September. And the uh, jocks beginning to file out. They're getting uh, plenty of time. Looking, some of them already a little bit grim. They'll be relaxing. And uh, there comes the, the Spanish Duke of Albuquerque. What a brave fellow he is. Oakley, uh, John Oaksey, Pat Buckley, John Oaksey, Philip Blacker, Spanish steps his jockey, puffing his uh, cheeks out a bit. Now it's now or never. This is the. I, a lot of them say this is the grimmest moment of all when you leave the the weighing room and you know now that uh, you're on your way. And there the uh, stipendiary steward. Colonel John Christian. The, of course, still the crowds coming in here. That's the, the view in the distance of the first six fences. The weather just slightly murky, um, away out in the distance. And he's the one that'll probably cut out the, uh, the pace. And there he is, Grey Sombrero. He's been very lightly raced this season, but he's none the worse for that. At Sandown, ridden by Bill Schumach and trained by David Gandolfo. Gray Sombrero. And here's Red Rum, trained by Donald McCain. He's also got Glen Kiln. And he had a disturbed night, the trainer did, because there was someone uh, reported that the, the stables were on fire at half past 11 at night, and he had to uh, rise himself out of bed. He said he just uh, dropped off into a, a dreamless uh, sleep. And Red Rum playing up a little bit, just to show uh, that he's uh, full of the joys of spring, and he's a 12 to 1 favourite. In uh, John Biggs' colours, the carriage success with Oxo in 1959. Fine big mare this by Prince Baal, and she's won over four miles and a bit at Warwick. So uh, she's got the reputation of being a real good stayer, and Walter Wharton is turning her out, looking a picture, and of course she's got... Uh, the first-class assistance in the saddle from Ron Barry, who's having a tremendously successful season. 31, Princess Camilla. And here's Lescargo, twice winner of the Cheltenham Gold Cup, a winner at uh, Haydock this season, beat Spanish Steps. Uh, it's a very close thing, and uh, the honours really went to Spanish Steps. He ran quite well in the Gold Cup the other day, Lescargo, ridden by his usual pilot, Tom Carberry, trained in Ireland by Dan Moore. Crisp just in the foreground there, then Spanish steps falling along behind Lescargo. There's Crisp and Richard Pittman. It's great because he's wearing bandages again, but he normally does. Uh, 15, General Simons, who did hit him for third place last season. Now, news of the betting. Mold on Petruccio's son, putting up five pounds overweight. Then the Puka. Behind the Puka is General Simons. And then David Nicholson on his 13th national ride and putting up six pounds overweight on Highland Seal. Being followed by John Hayne putting up two pound overweight on Mr. Vimy. And behind him in the cross belts, Rouge Autumn, Ken White. And then Asprey, Jimmy Burke. Behind him is Tarquin Bid. Then those bold striped sleeves, Bob Champion and Hurricane Rock. Behind him is Rough Silk. Then comes Richelieu, the tallest horse in the race, and behind him, Endless Folly. Then Princess Camilla, with Ron Barry putting up four pounds overweight. And behind him, Swan Shot, Martin Blackshaw. Then Rampsman, behind Rampsman is Fortune Bay, with George Sloan, his American owner rider, putting up three pounds overweight. Then in the hoops, Asheville, 
stable, the uh, same ownership of course as Blue Cargo. Then Great Noise. Behind Great Noise is Proud Percy. Behind Proud Percy is the Duke of Albuquerque on Nerio, putting up three pounds overweight. Then comes Colour Hill, seven pounds overweight, uh, Mr. Norton Brooks, and behind him, Green Plover. This is Charlie Winky. And then the hoop sleeves there, those of Go Continental, with uh, Jimmy McNaught putting up four pounds overweight. So just to go through the overweights once again, Prophecy two over, Petruccio Sun five over, Highland Seal six over, Mr. Vimy two pounds over, Bow Park one pound over, Asheville four pounds over, Great Noise two pounds over, Mildor five pounds over, Princess Camilla four pounds over, Fortune Bay three pounds over, Nerio three pounds over, Color Hill seven pounds over, and Go Continental four pounds over. And uh, the starter. Hancock surveying these 38 runners as great noise walking right his late substitute rider Dave Cartwright the spots there black secret walking behind Spanish steps in front of uh, Spanish steps is Les Cargo then Glenn Kiln one of the two hopes of 85 year old Henry Lemaire being written by the youngest rider, 20-year-old John Joe O'Neill, and that's a stable companion, Red Rum, written by Brian Fletcher, 25 years old, having his sixth national ride, and being followed by 24-year-old Bill Smith on his second national ride, Sonny Ladd, a course winner over a shorter distance. And he's followed by Beggar's Way, another of the hopes for Ireland, trained by Pat Taff, who himself rode two national winners. Second ride for Tommy Kinane. Five. Ray Sombrero, working right, General Simons. And Red Rum has just eased a little now to nine to one. That's Petruccio's son, center, David Mould, trained by Ms. Susan Morris. Petruccio Cap on this co top weight. And Ray Sombrero. Winner of eight chases, usually a front runner, will the uh, 32 year old Bill Schumach on his second national ride set out to make all the running? Hurricane Rock going right. There's Lescargo, eighth ride for 31 year old Tommy Carberry, son in law's, and uh, back up the straight towards the stands where John will pick them up over two ditches and then across the Melling Road and he'll be uh, handing back to me where we'll see them jump two plain fences as they're termed and then the chair one of the most intimidating number 15 then the water number 16 then they repass the Grand National start to go down into the country on the second circuit second and final circuit and the starter going across now towards his rostrum and the official with the white flag has it poised at any moment it'll be raised and the 38 runners for the 1973 Grand National will be under starter's orders. No draw for places. Bill Smith making his way to the inside on Sonny Laird with Rouge Autumn and Hurricane Rock and Red Rum and Chris co-favorites at 9-1 to one as the white flag is raised. They're being called in and Rough Silk has unseated his rider. Rough Silk has unseated his rider. Tim Norman. Tim who won it at his first attempt on a 50-1 to one shock winner. Having his fourth ride. He's soon reunited. Just uh, brushed off by the tapes there. 29-year-old Tim. That's David Nicholson. Island Seal looking actually across to the starter. Mr. Vimy is out of line. They won't go until he's uh, come and joined them. David turning Highland Seal. Ron Barry just coming in on Princess Camilla. And uh, this looks a possibility now. And that away. 
They're off, and Rouge Autumn starts fast on the inside with Sonny Laird, and uh, Go Continental moving up on the outside with Beggar's Way. Then comes Black Secret with General Simons on his outside, and Richelieu and Glenn killed, and it's Rouge Autumn leading them. Crisp has gone right up there with Sonny Laird on the inside, then comes Hurricane Rock, then Mildor over on the far side with Endless Folly and Beggar's Way and Black Secret, and with Rouge Autumn disputing it, they come to the first, and we join John Hanman. Black Secret, one of the leaders along with General Simons. They're at the first now, and Black Secret over in the lead. There's a follow, Richelieu has gone at the first, and as they go towards the second, Grace Sombrero on the outside along with Ash, then Glen Kiln, then comes Black Secret, General Simons, then Highland Seal. As they jump the second, no fallers at the second that I can see, and as they go to the third, Grace Sombrero on the outside from Ashfield, Black Secret, Crisp, General Simons over the ditch, and Grace Sombrero over first. There's a faller at that one. Ashville fell at that. And going to the fourth, Grey Sombrero in the lead and over to Julian Wilson. And spread right across the course with Grey Sombrero the leader over that one from Endless Folly in the centre. Black Secret towards the outside. Highland Seal just scrambled over that one. Crisp is right up there on the inside as they race down towards the fifth. Grey Sombrero right on the wide outside. He leads over it from on the inside. Crisp, then Rouge Autumn and Mill Door on the inside. Behind this comes Hurricane Rock and Sonny Ladd, but as they race down towards Beaches, it's the grey, grey sombrero, racing wide of the field, the clear leader from Crisp in second, Black Secret third, and at Beaches, grey sombrero over and just clears it from Crisp in second, Black Secret third, endless folly. Four, Sunny Loud five, Rouge Autumn is six, and Beggar's Way is a faller at Beaches, and uh, just about all the others have gone over it as they go over the next, with Crisp now the leader from Grey Sombrero, then Black Secret and Endless Folly, Sunny Loud and Rouge Autumn, then Hurricane Rock, then Great Noise towards the outside and Tarquin Bid as they come towards the canal turn, and Swan Shot walked and, uh, at the last one, and Mr. Vimy has refused as they jump the canal turn. Nerio has been pulled up and Crisp is the leader from Grey Sombrero as they jump Valentine's. Crisp over Valentine's from Grey Sombrero, Black Secret, Endless Folly, Sunny Lad, then Rouge Autumn, then Hurricane Rock on the inside of Great Noise, Mill Door and Tarquin Bid, then after that comes Spanish Steps, Highland Seal has been pulled up as they jump the next. Crisp over it from Grey Sombrero, Black Secret, Endless Folly, Sunny Lad, Rouge Autumn, Great Noise, Hurricane Rock, Mill Door, Darkwind Bed as we rejoin John Hanmer. Crisp in the lead from Grey Sombrero, Endless Folly, Black Secret, Great Noise. Then comes Rouge Autumn, Sunny Lad. Behind Sunny Lad is Hurricane Rock. And as they go towards the next fence, it's Crisp, the clear leader from Grey Sombrero, Endless Folly, Black Secret. Then comes Great Noise. Behind Great Noise is Sunny Lad, then Rouge Autumn, then comes Tarquin Bid, behind Tarquin Bid, Red Rum, then Spanish Steps, then Hurricane Rock, and Glen Kiln, as they, and as they go across the Milling Road, it's Crisp and a clear lead from Grey Sombrero, and Endless Folly, and over to Peter O'Sullivan. And it's Crisp still well clear from Grey Sombrero, then comes Endless Folly, then Black Secret, then Tarquin Bid, then Rouge Autumn, then Sunny Lad. Then Rum just in behind the leaders. Glen Kiln also, then Spanish Steps, then Hurricane Rock, and behind them come Proud Tarquin. Behind Proud Tarquin is Proud Percy. Then comes Les Gargo. Behind Les Gargo is Go Continental, and then Asprey, and behind Asprey is Princess Camilla, and then Petruchio's son. It's crisp, clear. Crisp is over from Grey Sombrero, jumps it second. Endless Folly jumps it third. Then Great noise four five is black secret six is rouge autumn seven spanish steps and eight tarquin bid and nine red rum and ten on the inside is sunny lad as they come to the next crisp over in the lead and clear of gray sombrero endless folly black secret rouge autumn tarquin bid great noise Sunny Lad behind Sunny Lad is Hurricane Rock and Proud Tarquin Red Rum well there and then comes Glen Kiln and coming to the chair now this is one of the biggest and Crisp his ears prick jumps it beautifully in the lead he just pecked a little bit but got away with it Grace Sombrero has pulled very near he's gone Grace Sombrero has gone at that one Grace Sombrero faller Glen Kiln's a faller Proud Percy's a faller with that one also and as they jump the water Crisp is a long way clear of endless folly and at endless folly jumps it second then comes Red Rum, behind Red Rum is Rouge Autumn, then Sunny Lad, Can Harris is a faller, then comes Great Noise, behind Great Noise is Spanish Steps and Black Secret and Hurricane Rock, then Tarquin Bid and Proud Tarquin and then Princess Camilla and Petruchio's son and then General Simons, and as they run down to the Melling Road, Crisp is a 
long way clear of the remainder, headed at the moment by Endless Folly, Rouge Autumn, Red Rum, then Sunnyland and Great Noise and Spanish Steps and Tarquin, Bit Proud Tarquin, then comes Black Secret, then Princess Camilla and Hurricane Rock, and as they come to the next, it's back to John Hanmer. And Chris just jumping the 17th, he's over, jumped it beautifully, a long way clear off at Rouge Autumn, Red Rum, Spanish Steps, Endless Folly still there, then comes Great Noise and Black Secret, behind Black Secret, Hurricane Rock, meanwhile Crisp at the 18th and over safely, well clear of Rouge Autumn. Then comes Red Rum, Tarquin Bid, Spanish Steps, Endless Folly, Great Noise, Black Secret, Hurricane Rock. Meanwhile, Chris Matt the ditch in the 19th. He stood right back, he jumped it well, and he's right out in front still of Red Rum second. Rouge Autumn is third, Spanish Steps fourth, Tarquin Bid is fifth, Great Noise is Endless Folly and Black Secret, and over to Julian Wilson. And Richard Pittman over that one on Crispin. What a fantastic ride he's having. I can't remember a horse so far ahead in the Grand National at this stage. Jumping that second was Red Rum. Then Spanish Steps on the outside of Rouge Autumn. Great Noise made a mistake there. But coming to the next, and Crisp is over that one. Safely over the one before Beaches from Red Rum. Then Spanish Steps and Tarquin Bid. Rouge Autumn and Hurricane Rock. Then Black Secret and Great Noise. And Tarquin Bid's gone at that one as Crisp comes on his own to Beaches Brook for the second time. Crisp, the top weight, Richard Pitt over it in tremendous style and he's about 20 lengths clear from Red Rum in second place behind this comes Spanish Steps and Hurricane Rock and Rouge Autumn they're over Beaches now then Black Secret over then Great Noise and Crisp is over the 23rd already and racing down to the canal turn as Red Rum jumps the 23rd in second place then Spanish Steps Hurricane Rock Rouge Autumn then Black Secret Great Noise on the outside of Proud Tarquin as Crisp jumps the canal turn and he's over it clear he's still 20 lengths clear from Red Rum in second. Spanish Steps is third. Hurricane Rock four. Rouge Autumn is five. Then Proud Tarquin on the inside of his stable mate. Black Secret behind this comes Great Noise and Princess Camilla then the Puka and then Folly as Chris jumps clear at Valentine's. Chris is still a long, long way ahead from Red Rum second and Crisp over that one, the one after Valentine's from Red Rum in second place. Spanish Steps is third, Hurricane Rock four, Rouge Autumn is five, Proud Tarquin is six, Black Secret is seven, Great Noise is eight, Princess Camilla nine, then the Puka and Lescaga who's still there, Endless Folly, Prophecy and Petruchio's son who are clear as we rejoin John Hammer. Chris has got three to jump, he's well clear of Red Rum, he's made a bit of ground, Spanish Steps is third, Hurricane Rock is fourth. Over the third from home, Crisp over safely, Red Rum in second place, then Spanish Steps, Hurricane Rock just passing Spanish Steps. Th then comes Rouge Autumn fifth and they're a long way clear of Proud Tarpin, Black Secret and Lescargo. And as they go across the Melling Road with two to jump, it's Crisp with Red Rum in second place making ground, but a very long gap after that to Hurricane Rock, Spanish Steps and Rouge Autumn and back to Pedro Sullivan. And he's conceding one stone nine to his pursuer, Crisp. It's Crisp in the lead from Red Rum, but Red Rum still making ground on him. Brown Fletcher on Red Rum, chasing Dick Pickman on Crisp. Crisp still well clear with two fences left to jump in the 1973 National. And this great Australian chaser, Crisp, with 12 stone on his back and 10 stone five on the back of Red Rum, who's chasing him. And they look to have it absolutely to themselves. At the second last, and Crisp is over and clear of Red Rum, who's just jumping it. A long way back in third are Spanish Steps and American Rock and Rouge Autumn and then Lescargo but coming to the final fence in the National now and it's Crisp still going in great style with 12 stories back he jumps it well Red Rum is about 15 lengths behind him as he jumps it and Dick Pittman coming to the elbow now in the National he's got 250 yards to run and Chris just wandering a little off the two line now he's beginning to lose concentration he's been out there on his own for so long and Red Rum is making ground on him still as they come to the line it's a hunt for a longer run now 200 yards now for Crisp and Red Rum still closing on him and Crisp is getting very tired and Red Rum is pounding after him. Red Rum is the one that's finishing the strongest. He's going to get up. Red Rum is going to win the national and at the line Red Rum has just snatched it from Crisp and Red Rum is the winner and Crisp is second. Les Gargo's just coming up now to be third. It's going to be a very near thing for fourth with Spanish Steps just being fourth as his dam was once. Rouge Autumn is fifth and six Hurricane Rock and seven is Proud Tarquin and then comes Prophecy and behind. Prophecy is Endless Folly and Black Secret and then Petruchio's son and the Pooker and Great Noise. And so the result of the 1973 National is first number eight Red Rum owned by 85-year-old Mr. Noel Lemaire, trained at Southport by Don McCain and written by 25-year-old Brown Fletcher. Second is number one, Crisp, owned by Sir Chester Manifold, trained by Fred Winter. 
and written by Richard Pittman. And third is number two, Lescargo, owned by Mr. Raymond Guest, trained by Dan Moore, and written by Tommy Carberry. And just passing the line now unscathed are Green Plover, Sonny Laird, and Go Pontical. All those three having finished as well. And Mildor is going to be last. Just three quarters of a length and 25 lengths. As we see for the second time in his life, Brown Fletcher returning to the winner's circle after a Grand National. He won it at his second attempt on Red Alligator, having been third on his first ride. This was his sixth, and this is how he and Red Rum finally wore down the gallant bid of Crisp, the 12 stone top weight, to make it all. Crisp, his attention has begun to wander. He's lost concentration as he approaches the furlong marker, but now he's plainly getting tired. His legs turning to lead now. 12 stone in the saddle and Red Rum with 12, 10 stone 5, just wearing him down as they come to the line. And Red Rum is the winner of a thrilling...